What is up? I'm Harbor Bickmore with Extra Credit Design Club, and today we are going to talk about why you have been using typefaces wrong your entire life. All right, before you shed a tear for your entire life wasted, don't worry. The future is looking bright. We are going to talk about how to fully utilize a typeface for what it is. I've been a graphic designer for the past 10 years or so, but it wasn't until I started designing my own typefaces that I realized, hey, I'm not really using typefaces how they were meant to be used. Or maybe more accurately, I was not using all of the features of typefaces to their full potential. So in this video, I aim to teach you how to unlock the full potential of typefaces so that you as a graphic designer can have total control over how your typesetting looks and really get an edge up with unique, interesting typesetting. This will be especially valuable if you want to get into you know, designing posters, designing books, magazines, publications, what have you, then this video is definitely for you. Okay, first things first, we really need to understand exactly what a typeface is. Obviously, a modern typeface is a digital drawing of letters, but it's so much more than that. The fact is that a typeface is a piece of software. And much like many other pieces of software, chances are you are not aware of all of the features included with the software and are not taking advantage of them. So, with that introduction and understanding that a typeface is so much more than digital drawing of letters, I'm gonna hop in and show you some of these features. But as a disclaimer, before we really get into it, the things that I'm going to talk about are, uh, you know, robust features of well-designed typefaces. Chances are, if you're buying a display font for $10, most of what I talk about will not apply. Likewise, if you are using free design softwares, such as Canva and other ones, chances are that they are not going to support all of the features that a well-designed typeface has to offer. And because of that, in this video, I am going to be using Adobe Illustrator. All of the Adobe software will support all of the features of contemporary typefaces. And for the fonts that I will be using, I will be using all fonts that are available at thatthattype.com, uh, which is the type foundry that I run. Now let's hop right into Adobe Illustrator. All right, we have here a normal little scene this is an artboard standard HD size, and we have here written Extra Credit Design Club. Now the font that I'm using, you can see here at the top, is Lastic. This is the font we use for Extra Credit Design Club's branding. Apropos. So the first thing I want to cover is variable typefaces. Now variable typefaces are different than regular typefaces in that they give you exact, precise control over certain attributes. Let me show you. So if I click here and I go to Lastic, if you don't have this character panel, you can go up to Window, you can go down to Type, and Character, click on that, and it'll pop up. So I have Lastic and I have a couple different options, regular, semi-bold, bold, extra bold, black, you know, things you might expect to see in a regular typeface. However, when the variable element comes into play, let me show you what happens. In order to access the variable font features, next to the style drop-down menu here, you have this little TT and a sliding bar menu or button. So if you click on that, you can see that right now, I have weight and this slider is dialed in all the way to 100, indicating that, yeah, the black weight is selected. But what happens, look at this font now, when I just whoop. So you can see I'm no longer confined to the set, you know, this weight, it's skinny, it's regular, it's bold, none of that. I can choose exactly the weight of my font. 
So this is useful and can be applied to more things than simply weight. As an example, let me scroll over to this next artboard here. We have extra, extra, read all about it. It's graphic design, baby. So there was a time in my design career where I was working for a uh, brand and they wanted everything big, bold, fill the page, fill the page, white space, never heard of them. And if I met them, I wouldn't like them. But I digress. So I was frustrated because I couldn't get the fonts that fit exactly. So I designed this typeface here, which is called a Guardi. And the awesome thing about it is if you open up the variable font features, you can see that you can dial in the weight exactly how you want it. Boom, big, bold, filling the page. But you can also, let's say I don't want it so big and bold, dial in the width. So if I want it to fill the width but not be so bold, I got that option. You know, and if I want it to be really skinny, oh, let me click back on. If I want it to be really skinny, I can do that. And I can just have total control over how I want this to look. So that is variable font features. And variable font features can be endless depending on what's designed into a typeface. It can be weight. It can be width, it can be X height, it can be how wide the ink traps are. Many, many different things can be designed as variable attributes in a typeface. There you have it, variable fonts. That's just the first tip I have for you. I think moving forward, variable fonts will become the industry standard. I personally will not design a typeface with multiple weights or widths unless it is variable. Because I just want to give the graphic designer that minutia control that I know I like as a graphic designer. So that's variable fonts. On to the next one. I'm going to hit you with style sets. All right, so I have here, this is the secondary font we use for the branding in Extra Credit Design Club. And it is called New Thing Sans. Again, available at thatthattype.com. To access style sets, what you need to do is open up the open type window. If you don't have it, again, go up here to window, scroll down to type, and select open type. And this will pop up. Generally, if a font includes a style set, if it's designed with one, when you go through the font specimen, or if you're buying from a place like Creative Market, if you browse through the thumbnails, it should be mentioned that, hey, this font includes a style set. So what a style set is, you can see here, if I go to my open type menu, I have this little, in the bottom right corner, style set. And if I click on it, you can see I have style sets 1 through 20. So modern typefaces being softwares can support up to 20 alternative style sets. This one has two. So for example, right now no style set is turned on and knowledge is power, but I'm about to hit you with that little extra power in what this style set one does in New Thing Sans. So if I hit you with that, now what happens? All the little O's turned into smiley faces and all the little arrows turned into pointing hands. It's very fun. So style sets are different ways to draw the same characters. So for an O, for example, if no style set is turned on, it's a no. If style set's one turned on, it's a smiley face. Now for these pointing hands, if I want different arrows, I can turn off style set one, the regular arrows. So I can choose which style set I want to apply to specific characters. You don't just have to apply it to the text as a whole. Now let's say I wanted to, instead of style set one here with that hand, I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna turn on style set two. What do we have here? Just a different style of pointing arrows. So that is style sets. This is kind of a funny example, but I'm gonna show you an example where style sets can become really, really powerful when used correctly. What we have here is another typeface called Wetris. Wetris is kind of this liquid womp 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 and you might think, oh, this is a hand done typeface because this T fits perfectly between the E and the R. And if I were to type anything else, you know, it ain't going to fit. However, <clears throat> 
if I type something else, let's do Harbor, which is my name. Um, I have here this first R, H-A-R, B-O-R, and the second R, and they look different. And that is because if I go to the style sets, you can see here I have eight different style sets plus the standard style. And that means that for each letter, there are nine different styles. And on my end, as I designed this typeface, I did a little bit of coding to say, hey, make sure the letters don't bump into each other, they're in the appropriate places, they don't repeat, and we get a cool little thing. So if I type in, for example, A, 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 we have here a whole bunch of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different A's that will automatically populate um, according to style set. And I can just type and get an automatic hand letter look and feel to my typefaces. So that's style sets. I encourage you as you're selecting typefaces to look into how might a typeface include different style sets. We're cooking on gas now. I'm gonna hit you with the next thing, which is just a grab bag of open type features. And you are going to see how much control you can really get when you really utilize open type features. So I have here a nonsense phrase. I'm talking about QJ123Film H2O. Doesn't make sense, but for my purposes, it's gonna. And I'm just gonna pretend like this is a company that I have that makes film and water and is ran by somebody named QJ. Okay, so this right here, you can see, is kind of ugly. The J is crashing into the Q, the F is crashing into the I, and that's a problem, that's something that we need to take care of. I'm gonna leave this original down here so you can see um, using these open type features how much we can really change this typeface. So the first thing I wanna take care of is uh, this QJ. With my open type features panel open, I am going to hit contextual alternatives. And when I do that, you can see that this J changes to a different style. So I defined again, when I was creating this typeface, that when the J is after a character with a descender, it changes into this short little skinny J. It's the contextual alternative. So contextual alternatives is selected in my open type features. Next, I'm gonna move on to this FI, and I am going to hit standard ligatures. By default, this will be turned on on all the Adobe uh, softwares, but if for some reason you didn't like this FI ligature here, you wanted it off, you can do that by selecting the standard ligatures button. So let's click back into here. What else can we do? Um, with this H2O, nobody actually writes H2O like that. It's all capitalized. So what we're going to do here is I could do H2O all in caps, but then it looks a little too big, a little too weighty. Um, so I'm gonna undo that. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna highlight the H2O and I am going to go to the character panel. If your character panel isn't this long with all these things, um, you can go to this hamburger menu and do um, show options. And with that selected, I am going to hit this button right here, small caps. Bah! And I'm going to turn on my small caps, which is another open type feature that is available in well-designed typefaces. But then we got a problem because this 2 is super big. Now, I can go select this 2, go back to my open type features, and on figure style, I can leave it at the default. I can do old style, which has my little small two, which could be a cool style. But I'm gonna go to default, and I'm gonna do it the scientific way, and I am going to choose subscript inferior. And what that does is it drops my two down so it looks very sciency automatically. So, what else can I do to this? Um, right here, let's say for this one, two, three, 
It just is kind of boring. I want to spice it up a bit. I, hey, our old friend style sets can go right here. Let's say, eh, no, that's too dark. So in this style set, one is defined by creating numbers and circles, and I don't like it. So I'm going to go to style set two. Oh, that's better. Puts the numbers in kind of these uh, knocked out circles, and that works for me. So you can see here the difference between this and this. I didn't have to change what I was typing at all. I just had to turn on and off certain features. And you can see here that this is a much more interesting, dynamic uh, type. Maybe it's not as appropriate or cool, but for my company of J or QJ123 Film H2O, it's exactly the vibe I'm trying to hit. So there are all kinds of open type features that you can explore now that you know where to find them, now that you know to look for open type features when you're selecting typefaces, I suggest that you dive deep and see what there is out there to offer. Hopefully with this video, you are able to move forward and create more interesting typefaces, select typefaces that offer more interesting features, and really be able to stand out from the crowd when it comes to typesetting. Like I said earlier, all of the typefaces that I use are from that, that type designed by me. The link is in the description for those. And if you want to learn more about typefaces, typeface design, or typesetting in graphic design, let me know and we can make that happen. And that's it. And that's all. Catch you in the next.